Hey everyone, in this video, I'll show you how to set up your custom GitLab server on your host machine using Docker container. Uh, but that container will be managed by Docker Compose. If you guys have not watched my previous video on how to set up your custom GitLab server on your host machine using Docker container, then I'll suggest you to watch that video first to understand how the basic Docker commands works, like for port mapping, for volumes binding, how to stop and run a container how to remove a container so in that video uh, i've shown how to set up a custom gitlab server on your host machine using docker container but all those steps are managed by the docker basic commands so in the previous video i mentioned that if you are managing uh, your containers directly through docker you need to run lots of docker commands from one or two or multiple terminals in this video i'll show you how to combine all those docker commands related to start stopping uh, volumes bindings port mappings container naming i'll show how to manage all those things in a docker compose docker compose is actually a tool used by the docker community to manage multiple containers or multiple services on your host machine and instead of creating and running independent containers on separate terminals and separate docker commands you can manage all those through a one docker compose so i'll just start writing how to set up your custom gitlab server uh, in a docker container through docker compose on your host machine so I'll just go to my IDE and i'll create a simple file called docker compose.yaml now if you guys know the basic syntax of the docker compose the first thing we mention is the version which is i think the latest one is 3.8 and then i'll mention services and under the services you can mention all your containers for gitlab server we just need one docker container which is the gitlab server so i'll just mention like uh I'll name it GitLab server. This is the service name. And then I'll mention what image I'm going to use. So if you guys remember from the previous video, the image we are using for the GitLab server is GitLab CE, which is the GitLab community edition. But if you guys are using the enterprise edition, the steps will remain the same. So the image I'll mention here is this image will come from the Docker Hub. So I'll need to mention the Docker Hub user for GitLab, which is the GitLab. And then I'll mention the image name, which is GitLab. CE. The next thing I'm going to mention is the container name. This is completely optional, but I just don't want to have a dummy name. Instead, I want to have some <clears throat> predictable name. So I'll just mention is like GitLab server. This is enough to run uh, your GitLab server in a Docker container. But if you want to access your GitLab server from your host machine, you need to mention your ports. And for ports, I'll do like ports. And on the host side, I want to run it on port 8088. And on the container side, the GitLab server is running on port 80. The next thing I'm going to mention is uh, some initial configuration. There are lots of configuration for the GitLab server, but for now, I'll just mention two things. One is the GitLab initial root password. If you don't mention that root password here, you need to run a simple Docker command. Once your Docker container is up, you need to run a, a command on your terminal on your running container to print the password from a specific file. So I'll just copy paste this configuration here instead of writing all those uh, here again. The GitLab server configurations are based on the environment variables. So here I'm mentioning the environment, which will set the environment variables to whatever I set here. The first environment variable is GitLab Omnibus config. And under this, you can set your initial root password. Once the container is running, you can see all these configuration in a running container from the file, etc. GitLab, GitLab.org. So the initial root password is abc at rate one two three up to nine. Uh, also remember that the minimum password length should be fourteen or I think fifteen characters, and also in, should be including an uppercase, a lowercase, a special character, and a number. The next thing I'm doing here is the worker processes. If you don't mention this worker processes here, by default, GitLab is running, I think, four worker processes. It's like you are running the GitLab in a cluster mode. And once you run it in a cluster mode, you will have multiple instances of the GitLab server. So for this uh, demo purpose, we don't need all those worker processes. And we are just good to have one independent uh, GitLab instance instead of having it in cluster mode to have multiple workers. So to disable the cluster mode, to disable the worker processes, you just need to mention this POMA worker process up to zero. This will also reduce the memory usage. If you have like more than 20 gigs of RAM or 16 gigs of, gigs of RAM, or if you don't have much things on your host machine running, you can uh, leave this without setting here, but it will consume around four gigs of RAM. This is enough for now. Uh, let's run this uh, from our terminal and see how it goes. So I'm in the same directory on the demo. I'll run Docker compose up. 
if you remember from the previous uh, video the first command we run was docker docker run and then we mentioned the image so first it did actually download the image and then it runs the image that same thing is done here by the docker compose when we do a docker compose up it actually goes to this compose file it looks for all the services here there could be like another service db and then there could be like a redis also so it will look for all the services here and it will see if this image is locally available on your host machine if you previously downloaded if this doesn't exist on your host machine this will start downloading it from the docker hub and if this is the very first time you are running your gitlab server gitlab community edition this will take five or ten minutes depending on your network speed and then it will do the port mapping and all these environment based configuration and it will start your gitlab server in a docker container so this could take around five or six minutes so let's wait for some time and then we will see how it goes so once you try it loading after a couple of minutes uh you will see this message with the status code 502 this means that the gitlab server is not ready yet to accept connections but the container is up and ready so you will need to wait for one or two more minutes and then you can see the gitlab server is loaded after we wait for one or two more minutes the gitlab server is up and the logs are coming here if i check it in a separate terminal uh, docker ps dash l dash l means the latest so the latest container running is the gitlab one i can see the image here i it just took two minutes and the port mapping is here from 8080 and this is the name of the container which i have mentioned here in the docker compose services now let's try to log in to the gitlab server the default user is root and the default password is what we have set here so i'll just go and copy this password and I'll put it here. I'm logged into the GitLab server. Now, what I will do is that I'll create just a, a demo project. Then I'll I'll create a blank project here. I'll give it a, a name like demo. And I'll pick a user, which is the default one, the root here. And I'll leave everything as it is. You guys can see the, the demo repository is created uh, under the root user. Now what I am doing is that I just wanted to show you guys if I stop this container, this running container, I just wanted to make sure that this demo project does not go away. So there are two ways to stop the container. One is to press the control C and the other is to <clears throat> open a separate terminal and do a docker compose. Stop. This has stopped the container. Uh, I can rerun that docker ps command. And now you guys can see the status is exited. And if I go to my another tab uh, on the same terminal you can see the logs are not coming now what i'll do is that this is this is not loading at all here so i'll do a docker compose up again this is same like i was previously running the docker run command instead of that i'm doing docker compose up this will again take one or two minute to make the gitlab server ready so now when i refreshed after uh, uh two minutes you guys can see i'm still logged in as it is the demo project is still there so you guys can see if i stop the container nothing is lost but what if i actually stop this container i'll do a docker compose stop and then once the container is stopped i'll completely remove this container so in the previous video uh, i've shown you how to remove a container and how to how to stop and how to remove a container so you can either use the docker basic commands to do like a docker stop and then a docker rm if you are managing your containers through docker compose you can do docker compose stop and to remove all the containers since we have just one container here we can do docker compose down and you guys can see the container is removed now if i do a docker compose up again the container <clears throat> should be up but i just want to check if the data i mean like the the repository and the user is lost or it's still there the user should be there because we are, that user is created by default with that default password we are mentioning here <clears throat> but we want to make sure the repository is there or it's lost so i'll run the docker compose up again from this same terminal the gitlab server is loaded uh, i'm trying to i'm trying to log in again with that same root user and that same default password i have set here if I click sign in and this return the 404 this 404 is actually for the repository we created before the demo repository because we removed the container and once you remove the container the data inside that container is lost so that's why we are not able to access the demo project so what is the solution the solution is we need a way to copy data from our like or sync data from your container 
to your host machine these things are actually mentioned in, in the in in the very detail in the previous video when we were setting gitlab server through docker but i'll mention it here again that if you want to make your data persistent from your container into your host machine you need to use volumes so in the gitlab we need to actually persist at least one folder i'll just copy paste it and put it here so we can go through it so this config and this log volume is completely like optional if you just want to make your repositories persistent you need this gitlab data which is actually syncing to the var opt gitlab folder inside the container but if you want to make your configuration also persistent like once you set up your gitlab server and then you make some changes to the configuration inside the docker container and you want to make those persistent so next time when you run your gitlab server exactly those configurations should be applied or if you want to move or copy your logs your gitlab logs from your container to your host machine if you want to easily debug those logs on your host machine so then you need to mount also this directory so these are the three directories the first one is for only configuration like the root user the password the worker processes and all those gitlab server related thing and this one is for just relating to the gitlab server logs access logs and the error logs and this one is related to actual data where the gitlab repositories and other things are persisted here if you guys can see here uh, i don't i don't have any other file or directory i just have the docker compose.yml but now once i run this docker compose file again i'll see that there should be a directory with the name gitlab and then inside that gitlab directory i'll see three folders one for config one for logs and one for data so these folders will be actually copied or mounted from the container into our host machine so now i'll just go back to my terminal i'll press ctrl c to stop the container and i'll do a docker compose up again so now i'm logged in back to the gitlab server what i wanted to show you that previously when i removed the container the repository was lost so this time i have since i have persistent the data you guys can see here the gitlab directory is created and we have three folders config data and logs so under the config you guys can see the ssh host the secrets and all those uh, security related stuff and in the gitlab rb you can see all this uh gitlab omni bus configuration like the password the worker processes and inside the data you guys can see the actual workers the gitlab server requires and the repositories and in the log you can see the, all the logs from all the workers required by the gitlab server i'll create a repository again i created this demo repository and now i want to stop this container and once this container is stopped i'll remove this com container completely by running the docker compose down command and i'll try to up the container again and then i'll see like i've stopped the container now i'll remove the container container is removed but you guys can see here the data or the directories mounted from the container to the host machines are still there now when i do docker compose up again what this service will do that it will apply all these ports configurations but this will also <clears throat> see if if i have all these directories here under the gitlab folder and if this exists under this gitlab folder it will copy or it will actually sync each of these directory to its relevant path we mentioned we have mentioned here so the gitlab config will be copied or synced with the etc gitlab config inside the container and the gitlab logs from here will be synced with the var log gitlab inside the docker container so these are the directories from the gitlab container inside the container and these are the directory we have already persisted the data on our end so when i run this docker compose up this will first try to load the container uh, then it will copy all the data from here into these relevant paths and then it will start the gitlab server so once all these directories are moved to the container the repositories will be picked from this directory the logs will be picked from this directory and the initial root password worker process will be picked from this one we will actually retain the data we have used previously this is just a demo but if you have like uh, a gitlab server which is running like dozens of repositories projects multiple users and all those stuff and the cluster management then these things are very crucial to maintain if server is loaded i am trying to log in the same user and password you guys can see i removed the container by running the docker compose down and now when i did a docker compose up again i can see the demo is already there 
this is because of we have made the data persistent from the container to our host machine since we have the repositories we can manage the users from here but you guys will be wondering how we can uh, run the pipelines like the ci cd pipelines for the cd pipelines you need to have a gitlab runner which is like completely independent independent from the gitlab server so in the next video i'll show you how to add another service here right exactly under the gitlab server like the gitlab runner so once we have the gitlab runner container the gitlab server container will be running separately and the gitlab runner container will be running separately and then we'll try to register a runner with the gitlab server from the gitlab runner the runner could be the runner could be a docker executor a kubernetes executor or some other os based machine running or jobs so keep in touch and i'll show you in the next video how to set up your gitlab runner and how to register a gitlab runner to execute your jobs